I'm Pastor George Barkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on spiritual, but not religious. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on the faith to the next generation. That's what we do in Higher Things. We pass the faith on. We equip parents, pastors, and congregations to give this gospel to our church's youth because they desperately need it. And if you believe that with us, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get the app. It's everywhere. Search Higher Things Lutheran. You'll find it. Donate. Your tax-deductible gift helps us keep the gospel in the ears of our church's youth. And our kids need this gospel and our continued Woke Wednesdays show it. Wednesday is Woke Wednesday. Uh, Erica Jacoby, she is the executive director of Higher Things. She is the face that runs the place in Higher Things. She is a former uh, public school high school teacher, which means she has some woke cred. Don't take this from me, Erica. Woke cred. <laughs> I don't know if cred. the kids would agree with you, but thanks. You are uncoolly cool. All right. So, Erica, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having All right. me. All right. Um, spiritual, not religious. What do you mean? What do people mean when they say they're spiritual, but not religious? It's a great question. So let's define it. Spiritual, but not religious. It's also known as spiritual, but not affiliated. And if you want to get really cool, you can say SBNA. And it's kind of a popular phrase used to self-identify um, a person's stance on spirituality that, that kind of demonstrates that they take issue with organized religion um, as the sole or most valuable way of fur furthering your spiritual growth. So um, spiritual but not religious would mean to, you know, you believe in it, maybe a higher, higher power, but not, you don't necessarily agree with participating in any form of, like I said, organized religion. Um, so you can kind of pick and choose and have a religious mortgage board um, of different things that you like from different religions and different spiritual paths. And they kind of mix them together in your own sort of stylistic, individualistic way. So that's essentially that's what the spiritual, not religious means when somebody um, talks about their religion that way or their spirituality that way. So there you go. Now, we've done a few videos on on spiritual, but not re I have now moved to the, your other side. I started on your oh. left and now I'm on the right, which I should always be on the right because I'm right. Always. And so... Uh, okay. We only have so much time in this segment. I'm not even going to touch that one. Go ahead. Uh, why are we talking about this on a Woke Wednesday? In other words, why is this important to discuss now? So I think it's important to discuss because it has been a trend. Um, statistically speaking, um, you know, Pew Research is, 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 um, is an organization that has done several surveys on religion in America, and they, they started... Um, asking these spiritual but not religious um, identifiers several years ago. And in fact, uh, in a survey that was a couple of years old, um, they talked about the fact that a, about a quarter of U.S. adults, 27 percent, say they now think of themselves as spiritual but not religious. And that was up eight percentage points in five years. So it's actually a trend that is that is growing. Um, and I think that... Um, it's kind of confusing if you're out there. There's a lot of information on the internet. Um, there's some negative um, um, uh, baggage maybe that organized religion has for some people. Um, and a lot of people who even maybe identify with religious groups um, in research um, are, are practicing lower levels of religious observance, meaning like maybe if they do identify themselves um, with a particular organization, they aren't actually engaging in that religion as much. Um, I think it might be helpful at this point, too, to kind of talk about and mentioned when I was defining the definition of SBNR, um, you're really looking at a religious hybrid. 
Um, and I'd love to give you an example of a, of a quote, somebody that demonstrates a spiritual but not religious um, um, attitude has said when questions about it. This is kind of an influencer on social media. She said this, I'm not Buddhist. I'm Christian. I pray every day. I meditate every day. I do yoga. I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. And praying is something my grandmother taught me as well. To pray and be grateful, have gratitude is a big thing for me. I like to pray and I like to meditate. Doing just three minutes of prayer at a minimum of five minutes uh, meditation twice a day sets the tone like an arrow so that you're hitting your target. When I pray, I always thank Mother Nature for all the beauty in the world. It's about having an attitude of gratitude. And then I pray to Christ to say, thank you for this day and my family and my health. And now that I'm older, I've added, please illuminate me. Please open my heart chakra, open my aperture and uplift my consciousness so that I can be the best version of myself. And I think that quote really demonstrates this sort of religious hybridity or this spiritual, not religious. You can tell she picked elements of sort of Hinduism and Christianity and kind of made it her own, right? So um, it's kind of a mess. Um, I, and, I, and I don't know if I'm just connecting the dots because that's what I do, but I see um, the same thing going on with kids and their identity. They're having to find this identity, look inside themselves for some sort of de definition. And uh, Pastor Burkhart, we've, we've talked about our baptismal identity before. I'm seeing here again the tendency to sort of look inside ourselves for answers. So I'm going to ask you now, <laughs> how can we answer someone who says they're spiritual and not religious? Because this sounds really woke to me. It sounds really open and really, you know, you may, maybe for me to say something like um, there's only one way um, would would really open me up as a target. Um, however, as a Christian, I know um, that uh, I Christ did not call us to be someone to look for our religion inside inside ourselves, um, yeah, Christian and, and being a Christian is sharing a common confession of faith. So, so can you help us? Like, how would I answer someone who tells me they're spiritual and not religious in a helpful way? Uh, first of all, I'm That's recovering from the prayer. <laughs> um, the uh, the first thing I would grant is um, we. There, we, we did tackle uh, giving up organized religion, organized Christianity about eight years ago. Uh, so uh, that's George's problem to put the link in the description. Um, you'll see a young me. My hair's even darker. Um, it's a young me. Um, okay, so I would grant the flaws that are in organized religion where where there is a um, an organization where there is a human element, there can be, um, uh, there can be sin and there can be mess ups and there can be uh, disaster. So, so first off, I find it very, very effective to, um, grant someone's point. And the point that I would grant is that a lot of times organized religion isn't, um, a great reflection of actual religion. Uh, usually the discussion is going on with religion versus faith. Here it is, now, the problem here is that organized religion is being, there's a semantic overload occurring because organized religion means the religion, the religion. So you grant them their point with your understanding of organized religion as the institute, the human institution. You follow me? Yes. So like, yes. like, like, and then you move to the truth. Okay. And, and here we're, we're going to say, well, okay, so while the institutions of religion, the human institutions can be flawed, we're going to try to find truth. Um, we're going to try to find God. We're going to, um, and not, we're going to, and what's great is that we're not going to actually try to find, God's not going to, we're not, not going to show up when we're looking for him. They tried to get up there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but so, so we have to sort of look at what is, what is truth. And for Christians, truth is Jesus. So like the problem with that prayer, while wonderfully diverse in picking off every single faith that major faith, I want to be illuminated Buddhism. I want to, um, nature that's pagan. Um, everybody, Chakra, but uh, yeah. yeah, everybody, but Allah, yeah. 
um, was was sort of yep. got a nod to. The problem in that is that these are so contradictory. All right. And so we, we want to sort of, sort of go, OK, here's the deal. Christ died for me. And one salvation for me. That's that's the true religion. The true faith is that Christ died and rose again for me. The other religions contradict that fact in that they have me earning my way to God or earning my illumination or earning my 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 peace or 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 a quid pro quo religion. Only Christianity has God doing everything for me and giving it to me as a gift. And so what I would do with this, and I guess we're going to talk about nuns next week and not the ones that used to whap me on the wrist, but nuns. Sure. Um, sure. N O N E S. Right. What I what I would do here is I would I would I would punch in Christ. So grant the fact that you know, like I'm not a big fan of organized religion either. That that when you bring men in and men are fighting for power and men are doing things, and if that's not the way that they define organized religion because they're not defining organized religion there, they're talking about the religion itself, it's okay because we've granted them a point which allows further conversation. But then I would come in with, my deal is that Christ died and rose again. If he didn't rise again, it wouldn't matter who you prayed to. But he did rise again. And therefore, there is a certain truth to what he says. And the way I know about what he says is the witness of the Gospels and what he did for me. So if he's alive and he says... I'm it and not, you know, I'm it when it comes to religion. I'm your religion. Jesus, I'm your faith. And any, any Protestant that's listening going, Jesus isn't my religion, he's my faith. Well, religion here is being described differently by, right. by woke folks um, on Woke Wednesday. So um, what I would do is I would really, 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 really push the, the death and resurrection of Christ and faith in him because if he doesn't raise from the dead, then it doesn't matter who I pray to. But if he did raise from the dead, then he says, I'm the prescription. I'm the pill. I'm the, I'm the thing which is going to make you better. Look, um, you probably had some, you've been sick before, right? If you went to your, went to your, yeah. went to your yeah, do yeah. doctor yeah. and your, your doctor was like, yeah, you've got, um, you've got flu. I'm sorry. You've got strep, not COVID, but, you know, I'm just going to throw a bunch of, I'm going to put, put a bunch of medicines in a shot for you and okay. I'm just going to give it to you. What I love about strep throat is like, if you have strep throat, you go to the doctor, he gives you a shot um, and that's it. That's it. Yep. You're, you're going to get better. Um, yep. Like I'm almost like when they say strep, I'm like, give it on my hip. Like shoot me here. Make me better. Um, I didn't want that image. I didn't want that image. Thank you. You're welcome. But the, the deal here is, but I, I, I need penicillin. I need an antibiotic. All right. Like giving me a COVID drug isn't going to cure my strep. Giving me a cancer drug isn't going to cure me my strep. In, in fact, it's probably going to make me sicker because medicines only are designed for certain things. The same with God. If Jesus died and rose again and he says, I'm it, I am organized and disorganized religion. That's me. All right. Then that's the one we need to listen to. Um, if you didn't, well, then you can get your melting pot of diversity religion going. But he, but he actually died and he actually rose and he actually lives. And that helps with any Christian who is sort of propagating this, I think, because we're yeah. dragging them back to the faith. We've gone 14 minutes and they're going to get mad at us. Any final comments? No, just that I think it's very helpful. You've told me where to locate Jesus, and um, it wasn't looking inside myself. Um, so I think that's a really, really great, great place to start. Thanks, Pastor Burkhart. Thank you, Erica. Um, I'll see you next week. Okay, uh, hopefully shorter. That was my fault. I went too long. But the no, but again, I maybe went too long. Sorry. But again, very, very important. Inside of you, uncertainty. You make it up. You determine what's what's right and what's wrong. You are the determining factor in your religion and that religion will last as long as you. But outside of you, in Jesus, in his death and resurrection, you will find true and lasting peace. Not just on Wednesdays, but on every day. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things Video Short. <laughs>